Thank you for listening to today's Veterans Christian Fellowship devotional Bible study, How to Enter the Eternal Kingdom. Please click the link in the description to read along, and be sure to look up and study the reference scriptures throughout. Our scripture reading today begins in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1-21. through I'll be reading in the New King James Version. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly, in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven, and we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 24 verses 3 through 4 reads, By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. In Friday's message, Set Your Sights on the Realities of Heaven, we discussed how Christ's disciples are to be solely focused on the Lord, living by faith in Jesus, not by sight, despite any troubles in this temporary world as the life we now live in the Spirit is one on assignment from God, not getting diverted with a focus on that which is perishing, but continually choosing to fix our focus on Jesus and His promise of eternal life with the assurance that there's no place like home with Him in heaven. Jesus says, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. When we remain in Jesus, he remains in us and keeps us securely on his path of righteousness, which is heaven bound. Jesus makes it clear that in this world his disciples will have trouble, but that by remaining in him, we can have courage and peace in the assurance of his victory and promises. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4-7, through seven, the Apostle Paul offers deeper insight into this peace of Christ as he exhorts, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, 
rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying that Christ's disciples have a peace that passes all understanding, regardless of what's going on in the world around them. Therefore, all who are in Christ are able to rejoice always without being shaken through their continuous prayers and thanksgiving to God. The peace of Christ is a promise from the Lord himself, but in order to have it, we must remain in him. Once again, we are called to acknowledge where our focus lies. How can we know when our focus has drifted away from the Lord? Well, in John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. It is an unconditional peace when born-again believers are in Christ as they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And for those who remain in Christ, the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. In John 14, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. And in Matthew 28, verse 20, Jesus concludes the Great Commission to his disciples with this promise, And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Christ's disciples are to remember that their bodies are a temple for the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. So, to answer our question, when we are in Christ, the indwelling Holy Spirit keeps us in His peace, regardless of situation. But if our hearts are troubled, if we are anxious and afraid, we know that we have taken our focus off of the eternal Spirit who indwells us, and look to that which is temporary and perishing instead. This amounts to wavering faith, or a faith failure if you will. The Bible teaches us that these occurrences are not uncommon in the life of a believer and even gives a few examples in the life of the Apostle Peter. Jesus calls his disciples to do miraculous things through faith. In Matthew 14 verses 26 through 31, as Jesus approaches the disciples while walking on water, we read, When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Seeing Jesus and believing him, Peter trusted that he could do what seemed impossible by trusting the Lord. But as he took his focus off of Jesus and placed it onto the situation around him, Peter began to sink. To which the Lord says, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Speaking of doubt, in another example of Peter's interactions with the Lord, prior to Jesus' arrest, he tells his disciples that they would all fall away from him that night. And in Matthew 26, 33, we read, Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Well, in verses 69 through 75, we read, Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway 
where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. In his discipleship of Christ, Peter had much to learn. Did Peter weep bitterly because of the guilt and shame of his failure to keep his word? Or because he learned that doubting the Lord was always unfruitful? Well, following his resurrection, Jesus has breakfast with some of the apostles at the Sea of Galilee. In John chapter 21, verses 15-17, through 17, we read, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Peter, understanding that Jesus knows all things, was hurt because of his faith failure. But Jesus redeems Peter by asking him to reaffirm his love for Jesus three times followed by the Lord's command to feed and take care of his sheep. A valuable lesson in faith that teaches us that it's not our own confidence or ability that enables us to serve the Lord's will. But love for Jesus and submission to him and his will, where the Holy Spirit indwells believers to supernaturally accomplish the will of God, so long as our focus is fixed on Jesus, who keeps in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on him because they trust him. The peace of God within born-again believers that passes all understanding, no matter what. As we continue in the scriptures, we know that after receiving power when the Holy Spirit came on him, Peter goes on in obedience to the Lord's commands and does amazing things to boldly further the gospel so that others may come to know Christ for salvation. Peter learned from his faith failures and grew in his trust and dependence in the Lord. Like Peter, we too should be able to acknowledge when we stray and experience faith failures so that we may grow and mature in Christ. Then we too can serve the Lord better and answer the call to feed his sheep. The life all born-again believers are called to isn't one of little faith which would be professing belief and then continuing in the old way of life with a fleshly focus. It is a changed life in which one learns to trust and follow Christ into spiritual maturity and to disciple others to Him. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-13, through 13, Peter shares great insight into the Christian virtues he learned from the Lord, saying, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these He has given us His very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind 
and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. While we are all not Peter, we all falter at times just like he did. But like Peter, God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Jesus. And through Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross, Christ's disciples have salvation by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world and the promise of eternal life as we remain in him. But Peter makes it clear here that Christ's disciples are to make every effort to grow our faith and the qualities of faith in Jesus in increasing measure, which keep us from being ineffective and unproductive in our witness for Christ. Peter encourages believers to be all the more eager to make our calling and election sure to avoid falling away from the faith. As Peter followed Jesus, let us follow Peter's example and instruction here so that we too can be welcomed into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant.